It is crazy at the moment. I got bees everywhere. They're all buzzing. Look, hello bee. Okay, you can pollinate that one because I want to keep the seeds of that one. So I don't know where you've been <laughs> as to how it's going to look or what the outcome of the seeds that I'm going to get from this beautiful amestro. So I'm getting seeds from this one or collecting seeds, let that dry up and I'm gonna harvest the seeds and also this amestro here which hasn't even opened up they haven't bloomed bloom, bloom yet so these two are sort of a smaller variety although these all came from one mummy these two, three actually, this one has turned variegated so I would say this is already a variegated amestro and beautiful. Well, okay, the bee again. Now I'm going to tell you a story. I'm older now and much wiser but... I was 11 years old, we went to my grandparents' farm back in the Philippines and we were wading through thick bush to get to the farm. Back then there was no road so we had to make our own road. Look at the bees, beautiful isn't it? And then I got stung by a bee on the face uh, below my eye and my whole face swelled up. So before that, all insects like lizards, I like to play with them. <laughs> Bees, I thought, were cute, making all that sound. But after I got stung, I became weary of them. So even ants scared me <laughs> for a while. I thought, they're going to bite me. <laughs> this is Graptopetalum um, mendosae. Hang on. I'll pull this. There's a bee in there. There's a bee in there. Okay. This one now, I had this. I have a video of this when I propagated this. So I started with a plant probably as big as that center there, which is not very much. And then now I've got them everywhere. But I think I got about three or four pots of this. Now, this one now, uh, when I did the video, this was, this was all full up. And look how beautiful the variegation is just starting to come out now. This is what I found with this plant. During winter, they actually lose their variegation. And then as the weather warm up or warms up in spring, like right now, this color or the colors starting to show up. See, so beautiful. But this is one of the main pot that I have. And, hang on, I, I might as well bring this. So this one is more exposed to the sun. This is actually much smaller. So if I compare them side by side, and there's only a few spots of variegation that can be seen on this plant. But so you got one variegation, and then the bottom there, and then slowly they're coming to. But apart from that, they're all mostly pink. It's like the little pink Mendoza marinade that I have, variety that I have here behind me so these are the same plant that's the non-variegated version and this is a variegated version and this one is about to bloom as well that one's blooming so you can see the flowers like white and also this one over here see these ones are all grown from leaves the there's a lot of white a bee just uh, flew past me look here it's just I can't get away from them. They're just everywhere. And I don't want to remove the flowers because of that, because of the bees, because last year we have a lot of bees missing. But anyway, enough with the Mendoza. This is Echeveria agita rose. This is a beautiful, beautiful um, variegated plant, nice and pointy and nice variegation. It has survived the winter here where we're in in Canberra, which is a zone nine. Oh, look at the bees. Oh, they're just like flying everywhere. And especially inside there, there's about, I don't know, a dozen around me. And behind me, see those bushes of flowers, the white flowers there? That's just thick with bees. And there's two of them, so there's another one there. That's the reason why I like to plant flowers. I can plant flowers. <laughs> Hello, bee. This is a different one. Skinny one. There's a few uh, types of bees. And I do have mealybugs. Uh, in here especially if I don't water but also when plants need cleaning up like that so I need to clean that up so as to uh, stop mealybug and also I have to remind myself of a lot of things that I need to do so anyway this is most of my Ionium uh, before a few years ago I actually uh, fallen in love with uh, Ionium Kiwi
which is this one here. Haworthy eye. So now the first one I had died on me because it did not like the frost. And back then I didn't know it didn't like the frost. So I put it outside because I asked the person I got it from. She said she grows it outside. And she didn't tell me that outside is actually protected. That one needs a much healthier soil. It doesn't like, I think that's a uh, swanchi, a uh, golden fire. I think they're the same as uh, another plant. I forgot now. Anyway, that one now needs to be protected and not exposed to the sun while they're growing. So a lot of the plants that I have, when I get them, like these ones here, these are only a few months under my care, I tend to not expose them out into the open. So those ones, they're all new repurchased and even that pretty one at the back there, that red wine, a red wine. Oh, I found my original mummy. In this pot contains the original mummy of my Graptopetalum Mendoza Marine. And look how cute the variegated one there. That's so cute. Most of them look like that when they started and then now they are just coming to they some of them actually a lot of them have sort of reverted but this is the mummy plant so you can see the stems quite big in the center not as big as some but <laughs> anyway i should really remove the flowers but then the bees the bees i like to share the nectar with the bees because without bees we're all gonna starve there's nothing to uh should we say no one to pollinate look there's no bee there i can see one flying the flower there but anyway Tinkerbell variegated look how beautiful that is these are all now babies these are not my original plants these are all propagations and now I'm ready to have some exposed to the Sun so out here they're still not as colorful and others have reverted back to non variegated form but since I've exposed it here then I'm hoping that this would actually be more proactive <laughs> and start coloring up so which is actually it's starting to color up so this one is grown from cuttings and I need to take that out there's some dry leaves there we have to remove the dry leaves and from one uh, cutting you got one two three four heads that grew is that five one two three four five yep five heads that grew from this main plant here very easy to grow look be hello don't sting me because I'm providing you with all this gorgeousness so you can feed your queen but don't sting me anyway so I'm trying to color it up so as with this uh, Bernalensi I forgot your name yeah it is Bernalensi <laughs> that one is apricot and the center oh my goodness this is so beautiful this uh, roulette I only have a couple of them that's in a pot because the other ones I recently bought I think last year I bought a few more just so I can grow them faster because they're a slow grower but anyway checking up all the fatness and the gorgeousness oh look at that beautiful and again that's flowering what's your name I think Frevel is your name Frevel yeah it is I would like to get some seeds from you and look there's a bee there's a bee as well see this is why you shouldn't spray because I've had a few bees that I found I was spraying my other stuff and my rose shield to stop the fungus and I found a couple of dead bees and I'm not very happy I don't like to kill them but anyway so I'm feeling guilty so now I'm just gonna be let them be let them be no spray aside from my metal this is my small but perfectly formed Echeveria far pillar and I also have another far pillar but of a different form because I believe it's a far pillar hybrid basically so now after a few months in my care it's starting to bloom now the most interesting part about this plant that got me so excited so I can still see the mother plant has formed another head here the new babies has got a different form look how pointy it is and with red tips and this is still grown uh, in the shade and now I'm, I've taken it out from where it was so, so it can have a lot more sunshine. And this one now started sprouting all these heads. And one might think that they are flower heads, but they're not. They're just plant heads. So this has changed its form from how it was. So I believe this might have been 
cross-pollinated or hybridized intentionally or unintentionally with fanfare or maybe uh, some other plant that's got a pointy leaves like this one because this is now changed completely. It's like rounded and pointy. This is the reason why so many succulents that are grown from the same seed can look different from each other. From being a hybrid plant to a hybrid or the hybrid. And we can now blame the bees, the bees for all this wonderfulness. But that one stem here looks like it's still like the far pillar, but the rest of it is just really pointy. Like I can't believe, I can't get over it. So now if I try and save the flower here, which has become small as well, because I believe that far pillar had got, uh, being an achiveria, would have bigger flowers than this one. So this would have been cross-pollinated with the sedum or something like that. And that's why the flower is much, much, much smaller. So even this one's here. This is an achiveria, what do you call that? Malgan, round leaves. Now this malgan here, I got a few malgan that are different form. In fact, there's another one here. There's another malgan that's monstrous and much smaller but the shape of the leaves is similar to this one or if not actually the same shape only this one's bigger but the flower is again uh, looks to me like it's got some pachypitum or graptopithalum uh, in it the way uh, it looks so and also smaller so maybe sedum as well like this one so the size of the flower matters <laughs> that's why it's good to keep the flowers just so we can see what it actually is. And speaking of flowers, this crispate beauty here now. So this is my beautiful Echeveria crispate beauty. So hang on, this is my oldest one that I've got in my care. And this one now, look, it is flowering, but that is not an Echeveria entirely, pure Echeveria flower. I believe that this crispate beauty could actually be a hybrid of Echeveria lilacina and some unknown Pachypitum because of the shape of the flowers. So if you want to know the genus of the succulent that you have, you have to wait for the flowers to bloom so you can tell better. So this crispy beauty has got the flower of a pachypitum and, and the way those leaves are growing on the stem indicates that it is an achiveria. After four years, I finally bought one of these now. <laughs> <laughs> After four years, I'm finally moving this. Look, <laughs> plastic has already corroded. This pot here has been sitting in there for at least four years. Unbelievable. I'm busy, so I can't really <laughs> blame me. But these are beautiful rocks that, oh my goodness, so gorgeous. Look at that. Uh, for succulent arrangement. And look at this one, it's got a look mother nature these are all concretion it's when the volcano erupts and it spews out all this lava magma and then the water get mixed into it and they started bubbling up and then as they sort of spits out in the air it starts cooling exposed to the air and then forms those funny shapes so that's what concretions are and this one look see how cute is that i am not going to put you in the bottom just in case the tip will actually break but whether you have it that way it looks like an animal of some sort like a cute mouse with eyes and ears <laughs> I don't know and then that way it's like being tickled by a walrus and I'm just kidding anyway this one now I am oh look at that huh gorgeous I'm putting them in here just making sure there's no uh, spider <laughs> So that is my task for today. And look at this one. This one, I actually need to put this on a succulent as well. And uh, have to, I think I'll grow it that way. Yep, we can put some succulent in that. So I'm not gonna put that in the bottom. And this one, I was protecting this because it's like a wing. Like, you are the wings beneath my wings. <laughs> now, okay, messy. Okay, so this is my task for today. I'm just sorting out some rocks and also cleaning up. So anyway, guys, I might show you the cleaning up, but we're not going to talk, okay, for something different. Because, look, that needs to be cleaned up. Anyway, guys, I will see you on the next cleanup <laughs> video clips. <laughs>